What's up everyone, my name is Ethan, welcome to Splash City. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe and let's get into it. So today I wanted to talk about the Los Angeles Lakers, continuing along with my offseason breakdown series, um, taking a look at LA, you know, their path towards winning another title because they won the NBA Finals last year, of course, and then dealt with a lot of injuries late in the, re the regular season this year and then going into the playoffs as well. Um, so this is a team that has a fair amount of, you know, uncertainty this offseason. They have quite a few free agents that they have to deal with. Um, and, uh, you know, the clock is ticking on LeBron James' career. He's, you know, 36, going to be 37 years old this season. Um, and so LeBron is, you know, how many more years does he have left? I have no idea. And the, the Lakers are going to try to get him at least one more ring before he retires. So we'll see if they can do that this coming year. Obviously, we know the situation the Lakers are in. They're really good when they're healthy, but they weren't this past year. You know, LeBron was coming off that ankle injury going into the postseason, and so he, you know, he looked like he was mostly healthy, but might have, you know, be still been dealing with some of the after effects of that late in the regular season. And then Anthony Davis, of course, going out in the first round, he had to miss the last couple of games of that game, that series against the Suns there. And so, you know, without those two, it's obviously going to be pretty tough for the Lakers to win. Who knows if they would have won the series if they were healthy? Obviously, the Suns are a very good team. They're showing that in the NBA Finals right now. Maybe the Lakers would have beat them. Maybe not. You never know. Uh, but the Western Conference is always going to be tough. It's never going to be easy to get through the West. And um, this team, as currently constructed, they're good. Obviously, you have LeBron and AD, but they do definitely need some more depth and a more well-constructed roster around those two if they want to make another, you know, run back to the finals through the Western Conference. Because, you know, like I said, the West is not getting any easier. There, there's teams that were also injured this past year that are going to be, you know, presumably going to be healthy next season, specifically the Denver Nuggets with Jamal Murray coming back from that ACL injury, Golden State Warriors with, with Clay Thompson coming back, and then they have two lottery picks to add to their core. Um, you know, a lot of other good teams still in the conference already with the Phoenix Suns, the LA Clippers, Utah Jazz, um, Dallas Mavericks, you know, Luka only getting better as well. So lots of great teams out West. Lakers are certainly one of them, um, but they, they there's uh, a lot of people kind of want to assume that they can kind of just roll the ball out there and, and you know toss it up next year and assuming health, this is going to be the best team in the league. I'm not entirely there on them. They Like I said, a lot of free agents for them to deal with, and um, th this roster is not as complete as it was a season ago, and um, there's a lot of moves that they need to make. So let's look at the cap sheet here. Uh, you have LeBron James under contract for two more seasons. He's entering his age 37 season. Um, so he's getting up there. And, and this past year, you know, LeBron started to kind of show cracks in his... Uh, his, you know, superhuman ability in some sort of way. Um, he's dealt with injuries two of the past three seasons. Obviously, he was healthy in 2020 and, and in the bubble, and that's when they won the title. But the year before that, he missed a lot of time with the groin injury, and they didn't make the playoffs. And then, obviously, this past year with the ankle and all that stuff going into the postseason. Now, he did play in the playoffs, but, you know, like I said, he maybe wasn't 100% and had to miss a lot of time down the stretch of the season. So, um, LeBron is getting up there in age. He's obviously still very, very, very good when he's healthy. He's still one of the best players in the the world and he's going to be until he retires there's not really a, a scenario where you know LeBron you know just becomes a role player late in his career as long as he is active and playing in the NBA he's going to be one of the lead guys on a team uh, so how many more years of LeBron do we have left you know maybe three four maybe he plays until he's 40 maybe he wants to wait until Bronny gets in the league he plays a year with him and then retires um, who knows about LeBron um, he's still gonna be good you know like I said until fur further notice he is one of the best players in the league I'm not willing to, you know, say that he is the undisputed best player in the NBA anymore. I don't think that is the case. Uh, there's a lot of guys who are really, really good at the top of the at the top of the league at the top of their game. Um, and you know, you, you want to talk about a guy like Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, um, Giannis is showing what he can do in the finals right now. Kawhi Leonard has been great for a very long time. Um, you know, Luca, I don't think he's quite there yet, but he is, is obviously a very good player already. Jokic just won the MVP. Um, there's a lot of great players in the NBA. LeBron is still one of them. He's in that class of guys, um, but I'm not entirely sold on him being the best player in the league today. And I don't think that's necessarily um, controversial or, you know, a hot take at this point just considering that the injuries and, and he does seem like he's slowing down a little bit um, you know not doubting LeBron at all I think he's gonna have a great season you know next year and for the rest of his career um, but you know it is fair to point out that there are some cracks forming in his game and that's okay because he's 37 years old Anthony Davis is locked up for four more seasons he signed that big extension last year um, Anthony Davis is also very good, but the injury concerns are there with him as well. He's not necessarily been the most durable guy during his career, and we saw him get injured during the postseason. And that was one of my concerns with the Lakers, you know, going into last year's playoffs is their ability to stay healthy because it's the same situation, right? Anthony Davis is an injury-prone player, and LeBron James is 37. So um, you're not going to be able to count on health for these guys. If they are healthy, they're a very, very good basketball team, but you just 
simply cannot count on that every year. And we saw it, you know, come to pass where that last season in the bubble, they both remained healthy and they won the title. And this year, they both were hurt and they lost in the first round. And that's just going to be the, the theme for this Lakers team. If they're healthy going into the playoffs, they're going to be a really tough team to beat. If not, it might be a different scenario, right? So Anthony Davis is great. One of the 10 best players in the world. Um, and, and when he's healthy, he's clearly a very, very effective and very talented basketball player. He's on, still only 28 years old. So he's got a, you know, a lot of more years left uh, of being a really good NBA player. Um, and he's going to be well worth this contract for the duration of it. But, uh, you know, it's fair to wonder whether he might have to take on a little bit more of the responsibility as LeBron ages, um, what this team is going to look like when LeBron eventually does retire and Anthony Davis is the lone star on this Lakers squad. Um, there's a lot of questions, you know, surrounding him and the future of the team. Um, you know, it's not necessarily time to ask them right now, considering that LeBron is still active and playing. But, um, you know, is Anthony Davis going to be the guy for them in, you know, three, four seasons? Uh, how does he ease into that role? Um, you know, this season, I think we could see him maybe taking a little bit more of the responsibility away from LeBron James um, as they sort of try this transition, um, transitional period. But I guess we'll see. You know, I'm not going to be one to just doubt LeBron and say, oh, he's not going to be good next year and he's going to need a ton of help. But let's face the reality. He's 37 years old. And so we might need Anthony Davis to uh, to step up and, and take some more of that offensive and defensive responsibilities away from LeBron James and be that guy. But if he's injured, then he can't do it. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if they both remain healthy. And if they do, then they're a title contender. If not, uh, who knows? Okay, now let's get to the supporting cast. Um, Dennis Schroeder is a free agent. This is an interesting one. Obviously, uh, he was in some trade rumors around the deadline, potentially being flipped for Kyle Lowry or DeMar DeRozan or, or some other player um, that might be a little bit, you know, better and more consistent for them. Schroeder is a good player. He's a good point guard, um, and he was, you know, especially really great for OKC last year. This season, there was some struggles for him, um, especially in the playoffs. His shooting numbers were dipping, and, and he wasn't playing super well, and uh, he got kind of caught in the big spotlight of being a Lakers role player because that's just what's going to happen. If the Lakers are good and uh, and you're a role player on the Lakers, it's got to be the most thankless job in sports because if, if you're playing well, then you're doing what you're supposed to do. Um, if you're playing poorly, then you're getting death threats sent to you. So um, not, a, not a great scenario for him to be in considering that he, he's coming off a, you know, a poor performance in the postseason. Um, I'm sure he wants to return to the, to the Lakers, but uh, do they want to pay him really? Um, how much is he going to be worth in free agency? There's a lot of questions to be answered for him. Um, you know, the reports are that he wants like 20 to 25 million annually. And, uh, you know, prior to his horrific postseason run, there might have been a chance that he would have gotten that. Uh, but now, you know, it's a little bit more up in the air. So they can re sign him. Um, I'll be interesting, you know, I'll be interested to see if it is for around 20 million a season or if it's, you know, more similar to what he's making now. Um, or whether he wants to go to a different team. You know, maybe there's another team with cap space out there that wants to sign him out right. We'll have to see. Uh, or could there be a sign-in trade that's worked out? I'm not entirely sure. The Lakers need to hold on to the talent, though, because they're, they're not going to have cap space with LeBron and AD both on those massive contracts. Um, and also you have KCP and Kuzma on the books eating up the rest of that space. So... If you lose Schroeder, not like you can just replace him and, you know, sign another point guard in free agency that's making the same amount of money. It's just not going to happen. So the team's probably going to want to hold on to the asset. Uh, but if the contract gets too expensive for them, you know, if another team's offering way more and he wants to leave, I'm not sure how high they're going to be willing to go on a match offer. Not like he's restricted or anything, but I'm sure he'll, you know, give the Lakers the opportunity to match whatever offer he's getting from somewhere else. Um, so, you know, we'll see on Schroeder, but uh, a lot could go either way for him and for the team. Um, like I said, want to hold on to the asset but also don't just pay him whatever he wants so it's kind of going to be a back and forth and and this is one that's uh one of the biggest ones in free agency this summer KCP has a contract for two more seasons. The second year is non-guaranteed. Um, the nature of his spot on this team is he's going to be in trade rumors. That $13 million, you know, if they need to match salary to bring in somebody, that's going to be one of the guys they're considering sending out. It's going to be him and Kuzma. Those are the two that are going to be in the rumors. Um, KCP's a good player. He's actually made a lot of improvements, I think, over the past couple of seasons. He's very valuable to what they do. He's a really good shooter. Um, he's gotten a lot more consistent with his three-point shot. Um, he's, you know, an underrated all-around player. He's a a pretty good defender. Um, I think KCP is, is a great role player for this Lakers team, and, and he's worth that money that he's on. Um, so, you know, we'll see if he does end up getting moved. I If I was them, I'd try to keep a guy like KCP, just because I do think that he 
uh, he fits with their stars and he fits with their system and what they want to do. Um, again, if you have to throw him in to, you know, make a salary matching move for like an all-star level player, then sure. Um, but you're not just going to trade him just for the sake of trading him because he is a good, you know, quality basketball player. Uh, Montres Harrell's got a player option. This is another one that's, that's really interesting for me. Um, because Harrell, you know, it was it was a little surprising that he took this two-year deal with LA. A lot of people thought he'd get more money in free agency um, instead of just the $9 million a season. You know, a lot of people were thinking he would be closer to the max or like $15, $16, $17 $17 million a season. Um, instead, he takes this kind of prove-it deal, the one plus one with the Lakers. Um, he's got a player option going into next year, so he could pick that up if he feels like he's not going to get a contract, um, or he could potentially turn that down in hopes of searching for more money or maybe a longer-term deal. Deal, um, with a different team, um, especially if he doesn't feel like his role was was correct on this year's Lakers team, because uh, they didn't really use him too much. He kind of found himself out of the rotation, especially in the playoffs, and um, he, you know, he didn't have a great season overall. So um, he might feel like he would rather go to a different team and try to prove what he can do and play a more consistent role. Um, but he might sacrifice money by doing that. So a uh, big decision for Montrez Harrell coming up this offseason. If he opts in, he's also a trade candidate. Uh, if he just wants to take the guaranteed money and then maybe the Lakers trade him somewhere else anyway and maybe that's what he wants to do right maybe he wants to go play for a different team like I said where he can have more of a consistent role so um Harrell's another interesting one I I doubt he'll be back to be honest with you I think if he opts in they're probably going to trade him uh, and if he opts out obviously that means he's probably going to go sign somewhere else so uh in my opinion it looks like Harrell's probably on his way out the door but I guess you never know let me skip down and talk about Kuzma. He's in a similar spot as KCP, I think. Uh, Kuzma's a good player. Uh, he wasn't great this season. You know, he had those up and down moments. He was actually, you know, made some improvements defensively um, and efficiency wise and, you know, kind of uh, becoming more of a, uh, an all around role player, but, you know, rounding out some of the other aspects of his game other than scoring. Uh, but he was pretty horrific in the playoffs and just didn't really play well, kind of shot him out of some games um, and, and, you know, didn't get many consistent minutes at some points and kind of got, you know, thrown to the bench a little bit. So um, Kuzma, you know, he signed that big extension and and uh, 13 million a season might be a little much for a guy like him. Um, you could see him potentially breaking out on a different team if they do want to move him. Um, but if not, I think it, it's fine if he sticks around on the Lakers. It's not the end of the world. A lot of a lot of Lakers fans really want to trade Kyle Kuzma this offseason, and I get it. Um, but uh, if there's not really a move out there for him, then uh, I don't think it makes much sense to do it. Obviously, if you can get something okay back, or if you have to throw his money in to match something, you know, for a bigger contract, like I said with KCP, then you have to kind of make that move. But uh, if not. I don't think it's the end of the world if Kuzma remains another season as a Laker. Um, then let's talk about some of these other more veteran type free agents. Wesley Matthews and Jared Dudley both entering free agency. Um, Dudley doesn't really play at all. He, obviously, he's 36. Uh, his career is pretty much over. They only re-signed him just to kind of be that veteran locker room mentor type guy like Udonis Haslam's doing for the Heat. Um, so we'll see if they do bring Dudley back. I mean, if he wants to play another year and they feel like they can, you know, kind of waste the roster spot on having a guy that's really only a locker room presence then sure um but if not he might just enter retirement and then wesley matthews can still contribute a little bit you know he's getting up there going to be 35 next year um but he he still can contribute i guess and, and i would assume that he would want to come back if they want him um he he's you know the type of guy that that a team that's trying to win a ring is going to want right a guy who has some nice pedigree has been around the league for a while has proven to be a solid role player for multiple teams across their career so Wesley Matthews Matthews is a guy that they would probably want to bring back and he was okay for them this year so um, I would consider it if I was them but if not then it's not the end of the world of course Alex Caruso entering free agency as well this is another pretty big one um, honestly, I think Caruso might be a little bit more important to them than any of the other free agents, even Schroeder. Um, Caruso's a really good basketball player. I know that he's become sort of a meme, obviously the way that he looks and sort of uh, his story kind of coming out of nowhere and, and, you know, being a role player on the most popular basketball team in America. Um, it, it's definitely interesting with Caruso because he really is, he's valuable to this team. He, he does a lot of good things for them while he's on the court. His plus minus numbers tell you that, uh, his, his per 30 six tells you that his chemistry with the the stars on this team tells you that um caruso is valuable to them and so i think he's going to get a raise in free agency um he would be a high priority to keep you know if i was running this team because caruso's uh you know he is sort of the glue guy he can hold this together um and he's very very valuable
level. He's exactly what you want in a role player next to LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Um, and I think that they, you know, value him similarly as well. Um, so I think they're going to want to keep him back. I don't know what the number's going to be. You know, it could be around the same number that Kuzma and KCP are already making, you know, 13, 14, 15 million per season. I really think Caruso has sort of played himself into that range. Um, and if not, he goes to a different team and he can make an impact on another really good playoff team. So um, if I was the Lakers, I'd bring back Caruso. And I think that they probably will. Um, Mark Gasol is has has another year on his contract. Um, wasn't great this season. Gasol, you know, kind of had uh, some lulls in his play. He had some, you know, some nice moments. Obviously, when he got in there as center, we know what he can do. He's a veteran, been around the block. He's you know a former defensive player of the year. He knows what he's doing offensively. He can pass. He can shoot. Um, and uh, Gasol's just you know a good veteran to have on this team. Um, his minutes were obviously up and down, especially after adding Andre Drummond at the midseason um, and having to play Montreal and having to play, you know, Anthony Davis at center at points and stuff like that. So um, Gasol's role is not exactly clear on this roster. I think he could be potentially traded if they throw him in somewhere. Um, if not, you know, he can come back. He can maybe be the starter next season, depending on what else they do with some of their other players. Um, I like Gasol on this roster. Actually, I still think he can contribute to this team, and I would not be mad if they brought him back for another year. But if they trade him or do a buyout or whatever, um, then that's fine, I guess, as well. Markeith Morris is going to be a free agent. Uh, another one of those guys, you know, I, I kind of lump him in with Wesley Matthews and I guess even Jared Dudley as well. You know, a guy on a minimum salary that, you know, veteran makes sense on a championship team. He's played a nice role for them over the past couple of years. Um, and he's, you know, the guy that you want to fill out your roster with, you know, guys who've had playoff experience that can still contribute for you when you need them. Um, so Markeith is a guy that I would want to bring back if I'm them. Um, I doubt that he is going to want more than a minimum contract. Maybe he's played himself into a little bit you know bigger than a minimum and maybe another team out there could could uh you know want to give him something like that whether that's a mid-level or a team with cap space might want to sign him so um i would be a little concerned about losing markeith but you know like i said there's veterans like him out there and there's a lot of them that are going to want to go to the lakers so if you lose him you can replace him pretty easily um but he is a guy who you know 31 years old i think they'd be interested in re-signing him it makes sense for both sides to do that um alfonso mckinney non-guaranteed for two more seasons um i think I think he probably sticks around unless they really need the roster spot, but they have a ton of free agents. Uh, they're going to have to sign a ton of players. And so McKinney, I think, could be a guy who just sort of sticks around on the back end of this roster and, and is sort of an afterthought there. Um, hasn't been in the rotation this, you know, this past season with the Lakers. Um, they could cut him. You know, he's non-guaranteed for the next couple of years. And so it's not the end of the world, but he is a guy who, you know, has some uh, not title experience, but finals experience when he was with Golden State and has played in the playoffs a couple of times. Um, so McKinney is a guy who doesn't hurt to have on the bottom of your roster, even if he's not amazing. Um, and, uh, you know, it's nice insurance if somebody goes down, he could potentially step in and play a couple of minutes. Um, but you can also just cut him if you need the roster spot, if you feel like you can, you know, add some other veterans to this team and you, and you want to have a little bit more depth with some proven playoff performers, um, then McKinney would be a guy that you would cut. But if not, he just sticks around and, and you know, sits on the end of the bench and gets in the game when it's a blowout. Talon Horton Tucker entering restricted free agency. Um, the Lakers value him very, very highly. I'm not sure I see it. Um, he is good, but he's not like, you know, gonna be the next LeBron James good, you know, gonna be the next whoever. Um, he's only 20 years old, you know, obviously a very young, very raw prospect, second round pick. Um, and they were reluctant to include him in trades for, for Kyle Lowry at the deadline. That was well chronicled, um, their reluctance to, to put him into any sort of trade. So I assume they want to bring him back on what kind of paycheck. I don't know. Um, another team could come in with a huge offer sheet and try to pry him away, especially because the Lakers, like I said, have Caruso and Schroeder uh, to worry about re-signing in free agency. So um, I don't know exactly if they will be able to bring Taylor Horton Tucker back. Like I said, I, it's clear that they value him. Uh, you know, for whatever reason, they think that he is going to be really, really great. And I'm not saying that he won't be, but uh, he hasn't really done a ton in his NBA career to prove to me that he's like going to be an all-star in three seasons. Um, so, you know, Taylor Horton Tucker is good. Restricted free agency is kind of a trap here uh, just because it's an unproven guy that people feel like has a ton of potential. And because it's the Lakers, you know, another team might kind of want to try to pry him away from them uh, if they also feel like he has some high potential. So um, interesting scenario there with him. 
And then you have a couple of buyout guys down here, Ben McLemore and Andre Drummond. Um, McLemore is the type of guy that I would re-sign on a minimum contract. Um, good shooter, can come in, he, you know, he's played some, some playoff minutes before on those Rockets teams from a couple of years ago. Um, he's not going to want more than the minimum, so you can just re-sign him for cheap and um, he, you know, he's a good shooting option off the bench for you. I, I would, I think McLemore is honestly going to be more valuable to this team than Drummond will be next year, so he would be the guy that I would prioritize re-signing to be completely completely honest. Um, Drummond's going to want a ton of money. He's going to expect minutes. He's going to expect to start. He's going to expect a lot of shots. Um, it's a trap. I wouldn't resign Andre Drummond. He doesn't fit the team. He doesn't fit with their stars. He doesn't fit the culture. Um, and he, you know, has made it clear on social media that he is expecting to be treated like a really, really, you know, important part of this team. When in reality, he was a buyout guy for a reason. He's probably going to be on a minimum next year. He should just be, you know, a rotation center off the bench and that should be his role so Drummond I I wouldn't do it I would just let him go you know let him be a mid-level exception guy for a dumb team out there in free agency uh, whoever wants to give Drummond a ton of money be my guest and if I'm the Lakers I wouldn't do it um, they might just because they feel like they have to keep a guy you know who has been an all-star in the past uh, but Drummond is not that good he's never been that good and um, I just would not re-sign him that's uh, that's my take on the situation and then two-way guys, Costas Antetokounmpo and Devontae Kaycock. Um, I remember seeing something that Costas has signed a deal with a club in Greece, apparently. So maybe he's done. Um, it wouldn't shock me. You know, he's he's here because of the potential that he has in being Giannis's brother. I mean, not that he hasn't earned his way to the NBA in his own right, but a lot of the reason that people are taking extra looks at him is because Giannis is so good and this is Giannis's brother. Um, he, he's not as good as Giannis. He's 23, obviously. He's not as good as Giannis, duh. Um, is he an NBA player? Maybe. Um, but uh, if he wants to go back overseas and play in Greece and, and play minutes, then that's fine, and the Lakers shouldn't worry too much about that. Um, Devontae Kaycock is another guy, you know, some some higher potential there. He's only 24. Um, wouldn't shock me if they brought him back just because, uh, you know, he's he could potentially turn it into something for them, but uh, these are two-way players for a reason, you know, not super consequential. So the plan for the Lakers needs to just be investing in the health of their two stars by... Um, you know, making sure that they have either enough depth or a third star to be able to take on the load if and when uh, LeBron and Anthony Davis have to miss time. Because LeBron is 37, like I said, Anthony Davis is injury prone. So they're going to have to find a way to make sure that they can stay afloat while both of those, those, those guys are injured, uh, whether that's during the regular season and just hope that everybody's healthy for the playoffs. And so um, they have a lot of interesting free agents, obviously Dennis Schroeder, um, Alex Caruso, as well as Andre Drummond and Montrez Harrell's scenario with his player option. Um, so, it, it, you know, it's going to be a big offseason for them, whether they want to bring back a lot of those guys or whether they want to let some of them go and bring in some other veterans because they're going to have options in terms of veterans wanting to join this team. They're playing in Los Angeles. It's a title contender. So um, there's going to be guys who want to join the roster. Um, so, you know, it's a pivotal offseason for them. I, I think they'll be okay with it, uh, you know, being able to fill out the rest of the roster, um, you know, around the margins. Uh, but they have to kind of go back to what they had a couple of years ago, right? With, with Dwight Howard and JaVale McGee, Rajon Rondo, you know, those type of guys who were able and willing to contribute in whatever ways they can. Can. Um, whereas this year it was more of a, a more of a soap opera with Drummond and Harrell and all these other guys kind of wanting more than was maybe best for the team. Um, so, you know, we'll see what they do, but uh, I think there was a blueprint for them and it was the title winning roster from two years ago. Um, so they just kind of got to get back to the same vibe of that and they'll be okay. But yeah, that's all I have on the Los Angeles Lakers. Like I said at the top of the video, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, ring the bell if you want to, leave a comment letting me know what you guys think about the Los Angeles Lakers and their hopes of winning the NBA title next year. Um, are they going to be able to get back to the finals and win another ring with LeBron James still on the roster? Would love to hear your thoughts on that down in the comments, be uh, the comments below. With all that said, uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.